Today you'll learn what Blender can do, both what it's really good at and the areas it's basically useless. I'm a Blender user of three years who has worked on multiple freelance projects for different companies. And from my experience, there are three things you need to understand before you even consider learning Blender. First is the results. What can you make with Blender? Second is how we get there. What are the actual technical steps that we need to take to get to those results? And thirdly, is Blender even the best option? It's famous, but there are tons of other programs that each do specific, unique things. So we'll go through a few of those so you can decide which one is best aligned to your goals. Let's go ahead and look at what Blender can do, because there's a lot. So at its most basic, Blender is a 3D program that allows you to create models, texture those models, animate them however you like, then render it out and either track them into already existing footage or not even use real footage and just place them in a completely CG digital environment. So because of that, the limitations of Blender really only come down to three things, your skill level, time, and computing power. Which is why on a feature film production, when you have thousands of artists, each equipped with a powerful machine, you can create almost anything. Blender is great for product animation and other sort of smaller scale projects, but if you have the time, you can create massive, expansive environments as well. It has a powerful sculpting suite that's perfect for character creation. It's fantastic at animation. It's good at modeling. It's adequate at texturing. And it does all this while being free. So there has to be some sort of catch, right? Well, for as awesome as Blender is, we need to talk about some of its weaknesses. But the main thing I want you to understand is that these weaknesses typically only hinder you when you have more experience. For example, I play pickleball. And I feel like my paddle is perfect for my play style, and I do better whenever I'm playing with it. But if I were to give somebody my old paddle, this paddle here, and it's their first time playing, or even probably their first few months, their limiting factor is not going to be this paddle. It's simply not that big of a difference. They have a lot of other things to improve before a new paddle will even make a difference at all. It's the exact same thing with Blender. A veteran 3D artist may want a more advanced simulation system and more modeling tools, but to a newer user, those tools aren't going to make a difference. Becoming a master of the fundamental tools that they already have access to is going to be way more beneficial. So how do you use Blender to achieve amazing results? This video is not meant to teach you how to use all the different different tools inside of Blender, but we're going to go through the major ones and grade them, giving it either like an A, B, or C, so that you can see what Blender's strengths and weaknesses are. First, let's look at Blender's modeling system. Modeling is essentially the backbone of any render, so having a robust tool set that will allow you to create anything you can imagine is super important. Blender has both hard surface and organic modeling tools. For instance, you can loop cut, bevel, extrude, subdivide really easily inside of Blender, giving it a great hard surface modeling system. Blender also has an amazing sculpting system, which competes in many ways to ZBrush, the industry standard sculpting software. Blender also has curves that can be used to create paths, or sinuous geometry, and NURBS, which stands for Non-Uniform Rational Beast Blinds. Basically, NURBS are very similar to curves, but it marries curves and standard normal geometry together, making it great for modeling things like cars and planes with sinuous flow. Altogether, modeling is one of Blender's strongest areas. In many ways, it combines two industry standard modeling programs, 3ds Max and ZBrush, into one. Now, Blender is obviously not as good as these two programs together, but it does 95% of what they can do for free. All things together, Blender has a fantastic modeling system, and I'll give it an A in this category. Next, let's take a look at texturing. There are two major methods of texturing in Blender. You can either create UV or procedural textures. UV textures are actual images that are then projected onto the mesh. And because you're using actual images from the real world, you often get things like scratches, dust, and imperfections for free without having to spend hours in post creating them mathematically. Procedural textures are math rather than image-based. Blender has a node system built into it that allows you to use math functions as well as pre-built nodes to create whatever texture you want. Both of these systems work very well, and the Blender team has expressed interest in developing the texture painting system even further, 
which means that Blender only stands to get better at texturing from here. The industry standard texturing software is Adobe Substance Painter, which does have a lot of extra functionality over Blender. But keep in mind that Blender is a jack of all trades program, meaning that if you want to, you can do almost every part of the 3D pipeline inside of it. But that doesn't mean that you can't supplement it with other programs. For instance, if you like Blender in its modeling system, you can use it for modeling, Substance Painter for sculpting, and Maya for animation. But all things considered, I'll give Blender's texturing system a B-. Next, let's examine Blender's animation system. This is one of the most important categories, because having a streamlined animation pipeline is essential to bring your vision to life. Blender is like most of their programs in that it uses a keyframe animation system. In its most basic form, Keyframe animation are just setting an object's location and orientation in one frame and then doing the same on another frame. Blender will then move the object just like you wanted it to. In Blender, you also have the graph editor that allows you to manage your keyframes. You can smooth out your animations or select a different interpolation mode to get the desired effect. There are lots of other programs that allow you to create animations, but the industry standard is Maya. Blender is very competitive with Maya, but at the highest degree of animation and rigging, Maya is simply better. But altogether, Blender does a really good job with animation, and I'll give it a B plus. Next, let's look at rendering. This is an extremely important category, because without a fast and realistic render engine, both your efficiency and quality of work will tank. Inside of Blender, you have two major render engines, Cycles and Eevee. Cycles is ray traced, and Eevee is real time. Ray traced render engines are generally slower, but that's because they aren't cutting any corners. They're tracing the individual rays of light from the camera camera to give the most realistic result. Real-time render engines like Eevee don't trace the individual rays of light, rather they cut a lot of corners by giving an approximation, which substantially increases speed, but also worsens quality. Often rendering a frame in Eevee will take like 2 seconds, whereas in Cycles it's like 45 seconds. So there's a massive speed difference on most projects, but there's also a quality gap. Both of these are excellent when compared to other render engines like Arnold, Octane, or V-Ray. In many cases, the other render engines are better or faster with the same quality, but you can also use a lot of those inside of Blender if they're compatible. But typically it'll cost extra. So for the render engines that are already inside of Blender, I'll give it a B. Our next category is learning curve. This is an interesting one, because if a program is easier to master, then you automatically have an advantage if you're using that program, and it could potentially save you hundreds of hours of trial and error. Since the release of Blender 2.8, it has become widely known for its user-friendly interface and gradual learning curve. This is probably the area where Blender excels most. Even though it's easy to pick up on its own, it also has the massive advantage of its community. Blender is by far the largest 3D program, and as such, it's supported by thousands of creators who can teach you almost anything that you want to know, ensuring that you have to spend less time to learn the same amount in Blender. This community aspect is not something that's necessarily better about Blender as a program, but it's still a massive benefit. I can't tell you the amount of times I'm trying to do some niche thing inside of Blender that I've forgotten how to do, and I just type in a tutorial and in a few minutes, I've already got that set up. So for the learning curve of Blender, I'm gonna give it an A+. It's by far one of the easiest programs to learn. Finally, let's look at some alternatives. Because while Blender is a jack of all trades, there are other amazing programs that you can use to either speed up your workflow by supplementing Blender or replace it altogether. First is Plasticity for Modeling. This is a CAD program that allows you to use the NURB style of modeling that we talked about earlier. And it's not a subscription. You get a free 30-day trial to see if you like it, and then you can own the program forever for 150 bucks. Another awesome program is Unreal Engine. It's completely free, and you can use it in game and environment design as well as virtual production. Right now, it has access to the Quixel Megascans library of assets, which are, I think, like 14,000, uh, but I believe those are supposed to be canceled at the end of the year in 2025, but it's still widely considered one of, if not the best game engine. There's also Maya, which is the industry standard in animation, and its sibling, 3DS Max, which is used mostly for hard surface modeling. They're quite expensive on their own. I think they're $1,800 per year each, but there are student as well as indie discounts. They'll let you get them for $305 a year or cheaper. I have separate videos comparing those to Blender if you want more details. Cinema 4D is the standard for product animation, and it has many great simulation features as well, but Houdini is the undisputed king of simulations. Houdini is also generally considered the hardest program to learn, uh, but it's heavily used in Hollywood and 
can do some insane things. There are lots of other programs that are a little bit more niche, like Substance Painter for texturing or ZBrush for sculpting, but those are sort of the main 3D programs that are used in the industry for hobbyists and professionals alike. I have detailed breakdowns of most of those on my channel, as well as tutorials if you want to get started with product animation. So if you're interested in any of that, you should subscribe, or if you enjoyed this video, you should leave a like. Thank you for watching.